Hello everybody! How do I sound? How's it going today? Today we're gonna be crocheting some bumblebees, but first I need to test out the audio and everything. Let me know how I sound, and if I need to turn anything up or down. Okay, see you soon!
I'm doing a little uh, buzzing sound because everybody in the chat is making bee puns. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. I've missed you. I took off a week uh, to go on vacation for a little bit, but now I'm back and I'm ready. And uh, be prepared because today we're going to be crocheting some bumblebees. We're gonna be making some little bees and some big bees, and uh, yeah, <laughs> hey, let's see. Grem Gremlin in the chat is all about them bee puns. Uh, and honey, <laughs> you got a lot of work to do. See, I did there with honey. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much a genius. Um, okay, well today we're gonna be making some bumblebees. Um, but before I get started, let's talk about uh, what you need for this. Um, now you. You don't have to be crocheting bumblebees with us. You can be making whatever you want. But uh, if you want to be crocheting bumblebees with us, there is a free pattern. I came out with uh, I came with this pattern actually like three years ago. But today I decided to make it free uh, for you know for the crochet along, so you can make it with us. Um, you can find it right here at clubcrochet.com/bees. And for this pattern, you need the following materials. Um, I'm gonna use all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton, as I like to do. Uh, and we're going to be using the colors yellow and black, black and yellow, a little bit of white. I'm going to use off-white um, just because it comes through on the camera a little bit better and, it, you know, it still looks really cute for the bumblebee, so it'll work. And some red um, for the lips of our uh, queen bee. You'll also need a little bit of gold yarn. I have it down somewhere. Well, whatever. I got gold yarn somewhere, too. Um, because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size G. Ooh, can it can it focus here, please? Thank you. G four millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a darning needle. I'm using one with a little crimped end. I like that. It helps me sew in the ends a little bit easier. Even though there's not really many ends to sew in on this, that's one of the reasons why I really like this pattern. Is it's really simple. Um, and a pair of scissors. Of course. And then obviously some stuffing, some safety eyes. I'm using six millimeter safety eyes for the little bee and eight millimeter safety eyes for our queen mama bee. Um, okay, so we'll put this uh, to, well, yeah, we'll put this to the side a little bit. I don't know if this comes through. Oh, it doesn't. That's nice. So I dented my light box the other day trying to get this, my thing off, and I thought it was going to be very visible on the camera, but I'm glad it's not. Let's talk about how you can support this channel if you'd like to while you guys are getting your materials. So if you like what's going on here and you think, oh man, that's really cool. I'd love to support him so that he makes more of these things. Uh, there's a few ways you can do so. The first way is to get a Club Crochet membership. That's the easiest, the best way. Memberships uh, are uh, a great way to help support the channel. You get access to all of my patterns. Every single pattern I come out with, membership accounts get access to. Um, that includes PDF tutorials, uh, video tutorials for everything, and I come out with new ones every single month. Uh, you can even get monthly kits mailed directly to your door with all the materials that you need to make whatever we're making that month. This month we're going to be making octopi. Um, specifically, here's a little preview for you guys. We're going to be making octopi and squid. Uh, now, I don't have the squid with the hat on for some reason because he's hiding from us. But I do have a squid without a hat on. Um, so here's a little squid for you. Here's some octopi. And what's great is in this month's kit, you're gonna be able to make your own hat. So you're gonna be able to choose which hat you want. Uh, and then it'll come with all the yarn to make your own little octopus with a, your own little hat. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. Um, if you are interested in that, consider becoming a Club Crochet Pro member to get monthly kits. Uh, and if you just have a regular membership account, you're going to get this pattern uh, actually early. Uh, I'm trying to finish it by this week, so it should be out pretty soon. Um, and also what's really cool is it's a really customizable pattern. Uh, here's one without any any mouth on it. So you can see how it's so simple. And what's great about it is it's a no-sew pattern. You don't have to sew anything on to make this. It's all made in one piece. I'm super duper duper proud of it. <laughs> can you tell? All right. Um, next month, uh, sorry, I meant Addy, next month. So this month, yes, this month we did the animals. Next month, at the end of the month, I send out the kits. Um, I should have been more clear with that. So on March, on the on June 1st is when those next kits will go out. Um, 
yeah so that's that's one way to help support the channel you can also help support by purchasing merch and kits in the shop and you can help support with a donation if you want to if you'd like to tip um, you can find this right here, clubcrochet.com slash tip. And if you tip, there should be this little thing that comes on screen. Oh, Cooperlicious did it. Did it come up on screen? Because I might have messed that up. Because I, I used the same one from last week, or from last time, so I'd like move things around. Let's see. Alert box, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so I don't think the alert came through. Let's see, if I do this again. There we go. There we go. I repeated the alert. Just for you, Cooperlicious. So if you'd like to donate, um, you can. Uh, and special special thank you to our first donator, Cooperlicious. Their name's going to come up right there. And that, that donation is going to go towards this bar here. We're trying to get to 400 to do a big old giveaway thing where anybody can win. Um, anybody and everybody can win. And if you donate, we're going to put up a little... Uh, a little guy for you on the screen to be a part of the live stream, all live stream, and supported completely by you. So Cooperlicious, let's see. I know, I know. We haven't seen this guy in quite a while. I think he. It, I think it's time that our coffee snob ogre comes out to say hi. So Cooperlicious, this guy's for you. Sven, our coffee snob, is going to be out and ready to judge our choices of. Espresso beans. <laughs> Sven reminds me of a friend I have named Austin who has a very similar hair to that. No glasses though. And actually he's not a coffee snob. So it's really just his hair. <laughs> I, would, I, I like to call him Thor sometimes. All right, let's see if I can fix this here focus thing because it keeps focusing in and out. So let's go ahead and do something like that. So that it stays in focus where we need it in focus. Okay. Um, uh, Patrick Kelly, no, 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 yes, hi. Okay. <laughs> what else? Uh, uh, you can also get stickers and stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just about it. Let's just get hooking. We got a few things to make today. We're going to start by just making a regular bumblebee. A little tiny boy. And then we're going to make the queen bee. I don't know. I don't think we're going to get to the hive today. Just because the bumblebee hive is like really big. Here's one that's already finished. You can see it takes quite a while to make the hive. Uh, I think this whole live stream would be taken up if, it, if I made the hive. It takes like an hour and a half maybe. Um, and it's kind of boring. Like, I mean, it's not boring to make, but it's it might be boring to watch because it's just, you know, making single crochets. Um, but it's really cool. I'm really proud of it. And what I think is going to be really neat about this, because I already have this one finished. I have two hives done. <coughs> Woo! Sneezing. Um, I actually have two hives done. So what I was thinking was we could make a baby mobile with it by having a hive in the center and then the bumblebees around the outside of the hive uh, and then one of the one of the queen bees around the outside. So we could make another um, baby mobile with this. And I was thinking, you know, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I don't have a nether baby mobile like uh, setup, but like I'll make everything for it and then I'll put it in. Um, who are the mods tonight? I don't think the moderators are here to be honest, so I guess I'm moderating myself. So if you say anything silly, uh, please don't. <laughs> I will be doing my best to moderate. Just don't say anything mean to me or anybody else. Let's just be nice and everything will go super duper scooper pooper. I'm gonna start with the wings of our bee. Our bee. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now ladies. Yeah. That's cooler than being cool. That's cool. All right, so we're just gonna be making See, am I like too far in here? Let me, let me, do, let me do a little scoop. Let me do a little scoop. How was your guys' week? I haven't seen you in like a week and a half. I got some cool things to show you. Four, five, six, seven. Jules and I went to uh, Yosemite for our friend's birthday. One, two, three. We want to skip three. Okay, and then we'll work into the fourth. 
working through the back loop here. We went to Yosemite for a friend's birthday to maybe the most beautiful lodge that I've ever been to. <laughs> it was awesome. There was a pool table, played a lot of pool. Um, there was a hot tub. It was amazing. Oh my gosh. If you'd like to see a quick little clip of it, I posted a video of it in our um, latest Loop and Pearl podcast that came out on Thursday. Um, if you don't know what the Loop and Pearl podcast is, that's a little podcast that me and my girlfriend Jules do, uh, where we just show all the things that we've been making. Uh, she knits and I crochet. And so she, we show all the things we've been making, talk about like just yarn related stuff and just hang out and chat. It's pretty fun. I showed off some cool things. I'll show you some of the things that I was making uh, in this live stream as well though. All right. One wing done already. Just like the one wing dove. I finished a bumblebee wing. Ooh, baby, ooh. That ooh. <laughs> Arlene is supposed to be studying for an exam, and so was someone else. Two people are supposed to be studying for an exam, and instead, they decided to crochet, which <clears throat> I don't endorse. But I do understand. I did that all the time when I was in high school. I uh, I pretty much crocheted my way through high school. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I totally get it. Sometimes, and honestly, crocheting helps you focus. And maybe it doesn't help you study, but, well, I mean, I guess if you had, like, if you were studying with using a video, it would help. Because, I don't know for you guys, but for me, crocheting, like, cuts out the lizard brain for me like I can obviously I can crochet and talk at the same time at least to a certain degree it depends how complicated I'm doing things but because of that it kind of cuts off the little lizard brain that's wanting to do other things you know the one that wants to play with a fidget spinner or or tap on my my book instead of paying attention and so it helps me uh I don't know. Retain information. That's what I think. Let me know if you think the same. Oh, sunshine. Happy anniversary and birthday. Wow. A lot of, a lot of big moments there for you, sunshine. I am so happy for you. Happy birthday. Uh, you don't have to tell us how old you are, but if you want to, um, I'll, I'll be looking. <laughs> happy birthday. How long were you, how long you been married for? Procrastinator unity. I agree. I am the biggest procrastinator ever. Ever? Ever. Maybe not ever. I are some pretty, pretty big procrastinators out there. Okay, so while I'm going through this pattern, by the way, um, I'm going to be using something called the perfect stripe method for the uh, body of our bumblebees. Um, and you'll see it makes like a very, very clean stripe for the bumblebee. This isn't a necessity for the pattern. You don't have to do the bumblebee uh, with perfect stripes, but obviously it makes the stripes a little bit cleaner. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Oh yeah, totally. The OCD brain is right there with me. Yeah, I feel that. It's a great way to just like shut up that part of your brain that wants to say like, do this, do that, do this. Yeah, I was thinking a lot actually about um, about crocheting in silence. Uh, some very rarely, but sometimes I do crochet in silence if I need to think really hard about something. If I need to think about really hard about what I'm crocheting, but also if I need to think about just something else in my life. Um, sometimes I just use crochet as a, uh, a way to get into like a meditative trance, which is pretty nice. But crocheting in silence, sometimes like this is the right word, but it does sometimes creep me out. It makes me like feel like I'm scared something's gonna happen, you know? That is why I like these live streams. <laughs> and that's why we have to have background music on or I'll go crazy. I'm already just, no. <gasps> just kidding. Yeah, I was actually thinking about uh, about crocheting with music or uh, podcasts or audiobooks on 
and we I decided I have made a decided see what we're gonna be doing what we're gonna be trying is we're gonna be bringing back the book and hook club to uh, to the stream so if if anybody's been following Louis loops for a long time I don't think I ever did this on club crochet but I have done it on Louis loops my channel that I was doing all my crochet stuff on before I created Club Crochet. And, oh, Emily Arts, I love that. Yes, absolutely. Emily Arts just donated, uh, and so thank you so much, Emily. And for her donation, she requested that uh, we put a little uh, top hat on our bumblebee, and I think that is a really good idea. Uh, so instead of putting something out for you, Emily, we are gonna be putting the top hat on our bumblebee. I think that's a great idea. I love it. I love it. I love it. I was thinking we could do little hats for each of our bumblebees. Um, but what I was saying was our book and hook club is coming back. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be doing the book and hook club. Oh, crafty chats. That's a great question. I'll answer that in just a second. Um, so I don't know if we're going to be putting the book and hook club, the full book on this channel. So I don't think we're going to be doing like the entire book unless it gets a bunch of likes so the plan is we're going to be listening to an audiobook together and crocheting something at the same time I'm going to um, Katrina we can't see what you're saying in the chat um, I'm going to be putting uh, doing the entire video of just me crocheting in front of a camera and then I'm going to be like uploading it uh, and doing it as a premiere and then listening to the audiobook with you so we press we all press play at the same time there's going to be some light background music during the audiobook so that if you don't want to listen to the audiobook you can just crochet along with me and then i'm going to be in the chat uh, because i won't be able to talk to you live in the video instead i'm going to be in the chat talking with you and so that way we can talk about the book or about whatever we want uh, and we can all crochet together and just make some fun stuff the book we're going to do is the um uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's 20,000 leaks under the sea because I want to do, um, that octopi and stuff during the live stream or, or during the, like the book and hook club. But, uh, because the book is like 12 hours, I can't do, you know, a 12 hour live stream. And I don't want to do like, I don't want to commit myself to doing a bunch of live streams for this one book if people aren't going to be really into it so what i decided was uh and special thanks to my mom for coming up with this idea because i was a little worried about it uh was that we're gonna do a um we're gonna do one episode of it which is gonna stop at like you know a certain chapter in the book and then if that episode of the book and hook live stream gets a bunch of likes then we're going to um do a uh we're gonna i'll continue it so it'll be like i don't know 300 likes or something and if it gets that many then we'll continue the book uh, otherwise i'll move on to something else and then come back to the book later or something because i don't want to put a bunch of effort into it if like you know if no one's really that interested i just don't want to like pre preemptively do a four episode series that's four hours each you know, it's just a lot when I could be spending that time writing patterns. Oh, another thing about the book and hook that I forgot to mention is that while I'm doing, while I'm crocheting whatever I'm making, um, the written version of the pattern is going to be on screen. So I'm kind of making this as another opportunity to put, uh, to do patterns in a different way on this channel because usually when i do my crochet patterns i take you through it step by step where i like vocally say like okay next we put this stitch next we put that stitch but i know that a lot of people crochet different ways and i do have the written tutorials on the website so what i thought would be fun and a cool way to like um make these videos have more value to people that aren't uh into the idea of listening to an audiobook simultaneously is i'm gonna put the actual written pattern uh, for whatever we're making on screen via the website's uh, uh, pattern, um, like, follower. I don't know what to call that. Via the pattern on the website. So that's the 
that's the tentative plan. It's gonna probably happen in a week or so. Um, we're just gonna do, yeah, we're gonna do something like that. I got a plan for next week's live stream as well, which I think you guys are gonna really like. I think you guys are gonna like. Rebecca's bee is shrinking. I mean, it's kind of supposed to shrink, right? At, a, <laughs> at least a little bit. I have got a scab on the tip of my nose right here, and it is bugging me. You know what I mean? It's from our trip to Yosemite. It was so dry out there. My nose started to dry out, and now it's like, uh, I just want to pick it off, but I can't because I'll just start bleeding everywhere. Do I have a specific genre in mind? Do you mean for the book? Addy, that's what Addy asks. Um, do you mean for the book or do you mean for something else? So the it, specific genre in mind for the book is that uh, we're going, it's not a genre, it's a specific book. We're gonna probably be doing 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea because I've never read it and I thought it'd be fun. Hmm. <laughs> TMI about the scab. Sorry, Crafty. Oh, Crafty Chats, I forgot to answer your question earlier. So Crafty Chats asked, uh, why did I do a secondary channel? Um, because Louis Loops was starting to become a lot more about uh, patterns, but that's not really what the goal of Louis Loops was. The Louis Loops was just basically me making fun stuff that happened to be crocheted. Um, it wasn't like me doing tutorials and stuff. And because of that, the channel got really, like uh, the following of the channel got really complicated. So some people were following the channel for just like fun yarn, yarn animation, like stop motion animation things that I was making. And then some people were following for the tutorials. And because of that, like certain people wouldn't view certain videos and therefore my videos wouldn't get shared with other people. So it was, it was end up get, it was getting to the point where everybody was like confused of like what is this channel even about? By everyone I mean mostly me. I was like, what is this channel about? So that's why I started uh, Club Crochet instead. Because so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do a secondary channel that's specifically about how to crochet, doing crochet alongs, stuff like that, and not about um, about learning or about like other stuff like me playing games and stuff like that. So that's why I separated it. Rebecca says that it is a good book and that is good news. Yes, I was complicating the algorithm very much so. And myself, I was just confusing myself. I, was, I didn't know what to come out with because I don't know. Yeah, that was, that was a few, that was like four years ago now though that I started Club Crochet. I'd also just done a Kickstarter for Crocheting 101, my How to Crochet series. And I thought, you know, well, let's turn this Kickstarter into something a little bit bigger and do a, uh, like, turn it into an actual business and stuff instead. And then also a big goal for Club Crochet is that I want it to be a, um, a production, like, place for other crocheters. So, Louis Loops myself is like an artist on club crochet but um but the goal is to eventually have other artists on club crochet and you see me kind of doing that a little bit with sir pearl gray's patterns so sir pearl gray comes in we do some patterns with him uh, we did one with lemon yarn creations and uh stuff with like there's another artist named uh geeky hooker that we've done some with so yeah it's just kind of like my goal is to like help other uh, Amy Gurumi artists and we can all work together a little bit so it's kind of supposed to become like its own its own little community its own little club you might say whoa Rebecca's read 20,000 Leagues Under Sea 16 times that's freaking crazy that's so many Yeah, I'm really excited to see how the book and hook thing goes. And just to hear, like, this sounds like a cool book. And that everybody seems to like it. I was reading some reviews on it to make sure that this is the book I wanted to do this with. And I was like, yo, you know what? Everybody says that it really holds up. So, let's do it. 
So you see here how I'm doing this perfect stripe method. You can see how clean the stripes are. See how like the black here is like just really, it's like really separated from the yellow. And the way I'm doing that, by the way, if you didn't know, is I'm doing something where I pull through with one color so that the top of the stitch is yellow and the bottom of it is black. And then I switch. So now, now in this next round, I'm gonna do it the other way around so that black is the top of the stitch and yellow is the bottom. And it really like makes a very clean, crisp edge to your Amy Um I really like it a lot. It's not necessary. You could just do this whole thing by just doing, um, just switching from black to yellow. Uh, but the stitches, um, let's see, do I have anything that does that? It's near me. Ah, uh, here. Yeah. So here's the Hulk here. And you can see, like, imagine imagine the green of the Hulk's body here was the yellow, and the purple here was the black. You see how there's those little points? Boop, 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 points there? Those points aren't there for our bumblebee because I did the perfect stripe method. So if I did the perfect stripe method for this, then those little green dots would instead be purple. And it would just really make it a clean, crisp uh, definition between the the colors. So that's the goal with this perfect stripe method. It is more complicated, no question. Like it is a more complicated way to do things. But uh, you know, sometimes I sometimes I like doing that. Sometimes I like complicating things just a little bit to make it a little easier. get our what color what color top hat should we do because I don't should we do a black a black top hat with like a with maybe like a red stripe on it or should we do it like a different color than black since the black is part of the bumblebee Emily you're the one that super chatted to ask for the hat what do you think do you want to do a brown top hat do you want to do a a black top hat a purple top hat what do you think let me know Hello, Emma. Welcome to the chat. Let's fix this. See that little bit is coming through and I don't like it. I just don't want it. There. Different. Emma wants a different. Crafty Chats thinks we should do a dark gray top hat. I think that's not a bad idea. I wonder how, I don't know how much of a dark gray I have though. We'll see. Shoot, which round am I on here? Oh, I'm on round seven, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm on round seven. Okay, cool. Dark gray with a gold stripe or red. That's what Emily thinks. Emily, you're the boss. Dark gray, let's, oh, I'll see what kind of dark grays I have after after I finish this and we will, we will judge it off of that. And no pressure, she says. I, I ain't feeling no pressure. Except for my, my toes are cold. Ooh. K's Origami Creations asks, Louis, is Amigurumi 101 going to update? Yes, it is. It is going to update. Ah! I got to over there. Um, it is going to update. I've been uh, working on a bunch of different um, tutorials for it. Uh, it's just, you know, my, my new goal here is to be coming out with one new uh, video a week if I can um, outside of the live stream so live stream each Sunday and then a new video each throughout each week uh, so one of the new videos is going to be a tutorial one will be a pattern one will be the loop and pearl podcast and then one will be whatever so that's throughout a month okay so we got four weeks in a month that's my goal 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to accomplish that, but that one tutorial is going to be, you know, Amigurumi 101. I'm going to be working on Amigurumi 101. Then one of the tutorials I'm really trying to solidify for Amigurumi 101 is going to be a uh, Amigurumi crash course where it's like, here's how to crochet Amigurumi. If you've never crocheted before, here's the best I could possibly do to teach you how to crochet in one video for complete beginners. Like the most simple way to make your amigurumi. That's going to be my kind of goal here. I want to try to do that as one. Also just tutorials about, um, I'm working on one for the magic loop method. Uh, talking about different kinds of magic loops. Why you'd want to use one over another one. So we're trying to go really into a deep dive of, of different stitches and stuff to uh, help your amigurumi grow. That's kind of the goal there. Um, okay, so we're done with round seven. I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch like that. Pull it out a little bit, we're gonna unwind it. This is the big bummer with doing these color change things is that you see all those, see how it like twists up like that? Candy canes is what I like to say. You gotta grab it from the end where the candy cane starts and then hold it up and let it spin its way out. Every time. That can be a little bit annoying. It's kind of fun, but it also can be a little annoying. Ooh, Cooperlicious, that's a great question. Cooperlicious asks if I have any videos where I show off my yarn collection. I don't, but I think I totally should. That would be that would be pretty cool. I have like a whole um, armoire of my different yarns. All right, I'm looking for black thread. I want to add a face to my guy. Oh, here it is. I knew I had it somewhere. Ooh. I think that's a great idea. I can definitely do a yarn yarn collection show off. I can show you my messy yarn collection because it is not clean. All right, so we want to add eyes. Now I'm gonna look at the picture for this to find the best spot for the eyes. Okay, maybe right here, maybe right here actually. Let's try right there. Maybe a little higher, maybe like right here. Because we want this to be the very bottom of it. Let's try like that, and then we'll try like, see how this looks. That's pretty good. What do you guys think? That's pretty good, right? far enough away. Before I solidify those, I'm going to use this. I'm gonna add the mouth first. Flash the stash, I like that. Will there be a videos for body parts, asks Kai. Absolutely. Yeah, that is a huge goal for Amigurumi 101 is to do more body part uh, tutorials. Where it's like, here's how to make bat wings, here's how to make ogre legs, stuff like that. Um, and I'll go here, right? Yes, we'll do it like that. This will go across like that. And we'll go, we'll try this. Let's see how this looks. Um, someone else said, uh, what editor do I use? I'm guessing you make, you mean what kind of editor do I use to like edit videos maybe? Um, or what kind of, I don't know what you mean there, but if you're asking about what kind of editor I use to make videos, I use, um, I usually use Adobe Premiere to do the start of the edits, and then I use Adobe After Effects to create any kind of like animations or like fun things that go on screen. I really like Adobe After Effects a lot. Um, I think it's a really fun program to use, but it is complicated. Um, I used to edit all my videos in Adobe After Effects, but I decided that that might be a little much. That might be a little much. What do you think of that smile? I don't know if I like it. I think we're gonna try it again. Let's try it one more time. Um. Oh, what kind of brand am I using? Sub Subrina. Ask what kind of brand of yarn I'm using. I think I'm I'm using Lily Sugar and Cream. I'm 
pretty certain um, for all of this cotton yarn. Uh, that's usually my favorite yarn to use for cotton because they have a lot of colors. Uh, I really like the the feel of it. Usually, sometimes it, it can be a little iffy, but in this case, I'm really liking it. Let's just go like that. I was gonna do like some fancy thing to make sure it, it was like smiling right, but I think we're just gonna have to go with it and pull it tighter. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe if I pull it right into that one. Let's try that. I know I'm just saying things and it doesn't really make any sense unless I show you. There we go. So we're going to go up through right here. So I was going up to this stitch. That's, oh wait, let me unblur this real quick. There we go. So I was going through here, but I think I'm going to go through like right there instead like right like so I think I'm gonna try to go through that and like pull this mouth down a little bit see how that works gotta be gentle with it because right now he's got kind of like a weird straight mouth How that goes. I just don't want to pull it too tight. You know, I don't want to, I, I kind of want to avoid it being like a V. I don't know. I'm thinking too much about this smile. Right. Yeah, I really like Lily Sugar and Cream. I think they're they're a good yarn. They got they got some good yarns. There you go. Oh, Emma, thank you. That is definitely the goal. This is supposed to be very calm and chill live stream where we just crochet something together. No stress involved. There shouldn't be stress when you're crocheting. Stressed crocheting sounds like a uh, recipe for disaster. Okay. Fix this a little bit. That's not bad. I'll 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 work with it. I'm cool with it. Can oh Rowan, oh Rowan. Rowan asks, can I make a dragon? Rowan, I am working on that. I am working on it and it is almost ready to rock and roll. It's going to be, um, the goal is for that to be the kit in, um, uh, to start August um, because I'm doing a really big thing that I'm not necessarily ready to talk about just yet, but just know in August, uh, I got some big, I got some big stuff planned for August. And it includes a dragon. Here, do you want to see the rough draft of it? One second, Rowan. Let me show you. I'll use this as an opportunity to drink some coffee while I'm out. The music got really loud. Okay. I'll look out for that. Check it out, Rowan. Check out this bad boy. I showed this on the last live stream, I think. Here is the, oh, he's gonna take away the bumblebee. Here is our rough draft for or for the dragon. You can see how awesome these wings are. They're so cool. So cool. I'm really, 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 really excited about this. So this pattern is going to be coming out soon. And um, it'll be in the rough draft soon too. So if you are a fan of rough draft, you can see how cool the little feet are. I did this really cool new thing for the feet to make these like three pointed toes. I'm really proud of this pattern, but obviously there is a lot that's going to go into it. So um, I'm going to need to test it out a bunch. And then it, the plan is for it to come out uh, in the start of August, uh, along with a really big new thing. So keep a lookout. Also, I got baby dragons too. I showed them last week, I think. 
Um, I don't think I have any baby dragons to show you. I think they're like over there. Oh, here's one. Here's a, this is like a rough draft for like a baby dragon that I've been working on too. So. It's cute, it's cute, it's cute. Lots of ideas, lots of things to show you. In the halftime show, I'm gonna show you a couple things that I've been making that I really want you to um, uh, give me some feedback on. I'm looking for feedback on the eyes of this thing that I'm making. I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna dig it. Um, okay, so where was I in this pattern? Kristen, do I remember you? I believe I do. I think so. There's a lot of people, you know, the, I know a lot of Kristens, but uh, Forsyth, I think, maybe? I don't know. I love that idea, Sabrina. Oh my God, that's such a good idea. Okay, so Sabrina says that what she did, let me grab this, let me grab this dinosaur with my little toes. Sabrina says that what she did was she took this dragon pattern and then added wing or this T-Rex pattern and added wings to it. That's genius. That is such a good idea. I love that. So simple. It's already out there basically. I love that idea. Okay, so where was I? I gotta keep going here. Oh, we gotta add the wings. Oh the doy. Lizzie, Lizzie's in here. Hey, Lizzie. Popping in to say hello, hello. Can I crochet a panda? Yeah, I could do a panda. I'll add that to the list. Um, we did do a red panda. I know it's not technically a panda, but we did do a red panda a few weeks ago. That was pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna try to make these wings like lined up pretty well with the with the eyes. So we're gonna try starting. When did I start crocheting? I started crocheting in high school. I think I started in um, sophomore year of high school. Uh, I just learned the basic stuff and then I just started making stuff up as I went. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot. Made a lot of things for um, friends and girls that I had crushes on. And it was cool. I'm super glad that I learned how to crochet early on uh, and found my passion so early. I remember when I first learned how to crochet and was getting super duper obsessed with it. Uh, uh, I think my my dad my dad didn't like acknowledge that I loved it so much he thought it was just he was thought it was just a fad he was like, no crocheting is my life now <laughs> okay let's see we're gonna do this one here Oh, thank you so much, Sabrina. Yeah, I really worked hard on that on my website. So I hope you enjoy the um, the website a lot because me and my uh, friend Jimmy, who helps me build my site, um, we work really hard on it, and I'm just so proud of it. I think it is so cool. Um, if you haven't, if you're watching this and you have not crocheted. Uh, something using one of my patterns from the website itself uh, check it out I think it is worth it's worth it I tried to make it as like um, good as possible for actually learning how to crochet like to make it easier to crochet by making like check marks and there's a video that follows you on the chin or on the site so you can keep track of where you're at I'm really proud of it I use it every single day on my phone because it's built for mobile as well Put that to the side all right so we got our wings on we got the face on now we can continue uh, working on the body before we add our little top hat for Emily oh 
gonna be so cute. It is gonna be so cute. I agree. Oh, yeah. Akozoil. I think I said your name right. Just started crocheting a few months ago and is already hooked. Uh, that's great. I'm telling you, you have, you, huh, you are in for a treat. Um, crochet is the best thing in the world, and as you learn more and more about it, you're just gonna love it more and more. You can make anything with it. It is 3D printing. I wanna get a t-shirt that says I'm a 3D printer. One, two, three, Four, and then I'm gonna de start decreasing it down. Oh, thank you, Ki Kristen. Okay, so then we're going to start decreasing. Sunshine, I think Sunshine said on my on the uh, Loop and Pearl premiere that you're gonna be crocheting. You're going to try to make as many of the club crochet patterns as you can in June. I think that's what you said. I am so excited to see how many you can make. I, I think you can make a lot because a huge amount of my patterns are um, what I call quick stitch patterns. So patterns that only take you like half an hour to an hour to make. Um, this bumblebee is actually one of them. So I think you're going to be able to make a lot of patterns, a lot of things. How many chains do I make when making the wings? Uh, I make seven chains, and then I start in the fourth chain from the hook, uh, and I do a triple crochet, and then a double crochet, and then a half double crochet, and then a single crochet. So that's how the B wings are made. Um, you can actually go to the written pattern too by just going to the link right here if you wanna just go straight to it. Right. Okay, cool. So only three repeats of this. So we're decreasing down now. Um, and I think we're going to be using just a l one more round with yellow. And then. Let's see. One, two, three. Cool. Yes, we are on track. Another reason why I really like the stripe method is because it's very easy to see where the end of the round is. So I don't have to be confused about where to finish up the round. Okay, slip stitch, chain one black, and we'll untangle this yarn and continue on the, the I think if you're crocheting along with me a bumblebee, I am on round nine. So I'm actually almost done with the bumblebee. And then we'll switch over and do uh, give him a top hat, and then we'll start working on our queen bee. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. Hello, Icy Reaper. Welcome. Can I say hi, Maya? Hey, Maya. How you doing? I actually have a few friends that are named Maya. One of the first things I crocheted, um, I would say one of the first like five things that I made was a big uh, uh, hot air balloon, a rainbow hot air balloon. It was about this big and it hung from the ceiling and it had a basket. And it was, I, it was one of the first things that I fully designed myself. Um, and I gave it to my friend whose name is Maya. And I also gave, you know what? I don't even think it was her birthday or anything. I think I just crocheted her a hot air balloon and then I also made her a book. Um, it was a uh, like a journal that I made and the, the outside of the book was made with wood. And then you, then I used like um, hinges on the wood to make it so it opened up. And then I put, um, I put two, I put one flat piece of wood and then little piece of wood here and then a bigger piece of wood that was on a hinge so it opened and then I screwed in the woods together between a bunch of paper that was like handmade paper 
and then uh, and then I did a on the front I cut out a hot air balloon of out of the wood so you could see through it it was so cool I didn't even have a crush on Maya or anything she was just a friend of mine it wasn't her birthday I just wanted to make something and then I did and it was one of the coolest things ever I, I should find pictures of that I haven't thought about that in so long that was like wow that was like one of those deep memories you know what I mean Am I going to make the hive? Addy, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the hive today just because the hive is like the um, the longest part of this this uh, bundle of patterns. So that one takes like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And honestly, it's kind of boring to watch. Um, it's not boring to make. It's very fun to make, but it's just kind of like boring to watch me make it. So I don't think I'm going to be doing the hive today. I'd rather... Um, I'd rather save that time and work on a pat the octopus pattern later today so that I can come out with it in time. Because I really want to come out with that octopus pattern like as soon as possible. So today is my day where I get to work on it. Oh, Making this while you make hearts you learned. Oh, you're making hearts for a customer. That's so nice. I love it. That heart pattern I'm super proud of. I think that's a cool one. There are, there's only a few that I go back to that I'm not super proud of, to be completely honest. Some of them I'm, I like go back and I, I recrochet it and I'm like, ooh, I could have done this a lot better. And then I redo it. I actually just redid on the website these, um, the bumblebees and the hive and everything. Uh, they were, they were written very poorly on the website and they weren't in like my new design. So I redid it to make it a little bit better last night at like 2 a.m. while I was making this free. Okay. We don't need yellow no mo. No mo yellow. We'll come back to it for our queen bee. Yeah, I'm really excited for that octopus pattern also. I was thinking of doing a um, a quick tutorial for the octopus that shows, or or for Amy Grimmy one oh one that explains how to do the mouth of the octopus so you can use it for other Amy Grimmy patterns. Because it's very like I don't know I just think it's so cool the how to make the mouth I'm like so into it I, I'll show you something else that I made with the same technique in a second. You're gonna dig it. You're gonna dig it. Dude, do I ever sleep? Yes, I do sleep. I just sleep in the day. So I, um, like last night, I went to sleep at four, three or four a.m. And I woke up for this live stream at like, like noon. So I woke up like an hour before. I just sleep in the day is all. I am a night owl. Okay, so that was round 10. Going around. How do the friends like the mobile? They haven't gotten it yet because they're, uh, I'm waiting for the baby shower they're due in july so i feel like a baby shower should be coming very soon if they don't do a baby shower they do i think they're doing like the end of july though um but if they don't do a baby shower i'll just have to just pop on over and give it to them i'm so excited though i told them about it at the um the guy whose birthday it was his name is tim was on um uh, it was his birthday in Yosemite, and his he's the one that's, him and his wife are having their second kid. Um, so I told him a little bit about it. I told him, like, hey, I have something really cool that you're going to like. But I didn't tell him what it was, but he's very excited to find out. Okay. That 
Bumblebee is looking great, right? Isn't that nice? Super tiny. You know what would be really fun to do with these bumblebees? Is to hide them all over. Maybe go to the Golden Gate Park. That's the, that's the park here in San Francisco. It might be really fun to go to the Golden Gate Park and then hide a bunch of these flying around trees. Wouldn't that be fun? To do like a yarn drop. I think that'd be so cool. I'm really into, um, I've always, <laughs> this is going to be so, something funny, but I've always really liked uh, graffiti. I've always really wanted to be a graffiti artist, but I'm too scared. Like, I don't want to get arrested, <laughs> you know? I don't want to, uh, I don't know. Being a graffiti artist is a very scary job. So, m the next best thing for me to do is to do yarn drops where I'll crochet something, crochet something or a bunch of things and then hide them around so they're really easy to remove. And it's like my own little form of graffiti, but it's cute. I've always wanted to do that in Golden Gate Park. I'm just, I don't know. I've always been nervous. Macy, hey Macy, elevator music. I think this this is video game music. Uh, I don't know what kind of elevators you've been riding. Maybe the ones in Resident Evil, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, it does kind of sound like elevator music a bit, doesn't it? It's supposed to be like jungle music from video games. I have no idea what game this is from though. Okay, I think I'm on my last round here for our bumblebee. And then I can start working on the hat for him. Um, if you are just tuning in, we're making bumblebees. Emily uh, super chatted a little bit ago asking that we make a top hat for our bumblebee. So we are going to be doing that. And then we're gonna start working on the queen bee. I think I'm gonna do a bit of a halftime show first and then I'll start working on the queen bee um, which probably is going to take a little while actually maybe I'm going to make the the wings and the crown for our queen bee first and then I'll start working on the um, then, I'll, then I'll do a halftime show let's do that because that'll be closer to half okay so yeah it might be Pikmin Totally might be Pikmin. I love Pikmin. That's like the best game in the world. I swear to God. I swear to Glob. Like that maybe? I know what game this one's from. This is from uh, New Super Mario Brothers, I think. I remember when you play this game, the, all the characters in the background jump when they goes, like when it goes, oh, it didn't do it. But when it goes, ha, they all like stop and do a little jump. It was very cute. Okay. Oyuku says, I'm a beginner and and get confused by this sentence. Then when you get to the top V indent, slip stitch instead of single crocheting, join, fasten off, and weave in the ends. I think your slip stitch is the join. I don't really know, are you, what pattern are you, are you working on one of my patterns? Or a different one? Okay, let me grab some gray yarn really quick so we can make our hat, because we don't want to use we don't want to use black for our hat because the, um, you know, our bumblebee's already black. So let's see some other, other colors that we can, we can mess with. Oh, this black yarn got super duper tangled up too. I think I'm just gonna, I 
think I'm just gonna cut it loose and then have two different balls of yarn. Okay. We'll deal with that later. Okay, let me put this to the side real quick and grab some different color yarn and then we will uh, make our top hat. From whom did I learn to crochet? Uh, I learned, I think I learned like a really simple tutorial online. Uh, and then I uh, taught myself after that. One sec. Let's try all three of these ones and see which one you guys like. So we're making a top hat here. Which of these colors would you feel would be best for our top hat? I think we're gonna do a stripe in the top hat as well. I'm thinking we do this gray. And then we do a stripe in red. But will that be a good top hat? Do you ever see gray top hats? Or we could do this brown. No, no, I don't think brown's a good idea. We could do a maroon top hat with a black stripe. No, let's do, let's try the gray, let's try the gray. Ah! ah. Oh, Emily, heck yes. Dude, I am obsessed with uh, looking up Silk Song updates. Um, Emily's talking about a game called Silk Song, which is the, uh, the sequel to a game called Hollow Knight, which I am obsessed with. Uh, legitimately, my entire YouTube, uh, you, like when I go to YouTube right now, it gives me like four suggestions for Hollow Knight videos. <laughs> I just love Hollow Knight. I move this guy out of the way a little bit. Okay. Our little coffee snob. One, two, three, four, five. I think we're gonna go six. I gotta look up the tutorial for this top hat real quick on my website. So let's look that up, which means that I'm not gonna be able to see the chat just for a sec. Because we wanna look up top. that it's just six then 12 and then you go down or something but we'll find out work around that yeah six twelve and then work in the front loops okay one, two let's pull this nice and tight so we can get that center to be tighter I need socks my toes are cold uh. oh interesting past Lou that's a very interesting way to do this pattern I like it cool so that's, that's gonna be like where the top hat's gonna go down to. Oh man, I didn't tell you guys, I thought about a really good idea for, um, for the Burb game. So did I tell you, I, I think we talked about it uh, last live stream or two live streams ago. I got an idea for the Burb game. Everybody gets a little tiny hat that goes in the top of their burbs, and then you put the bird head on top of the bird. Well, I just I just realized like I'm explaining this and I'm not like explaining anything. It's very complicated and confusing. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, here's our idea. We want to come up with a game for these birds, right? We were all talking about this a few weeks ago, and I think the fun game would be everybody gets a burb, 
and uh, with with a head, and then you get a different kind of hat that goes on the burb on the inside. This little guy right there, and then you put the head on, and then you have to. Everybody's sitting around in a circle, and you go around in a circle asking like, "Would you wear your hat to a party? Would you wear your hat to work?" You know, and you ask you ask around, and then you have to guess the hat that they're wearing under the head. And then if you guess it right, then they're out. And whoever's the last one standing wins. That's that's the the game I was thinking. And I can't remember who came up with the name, but someone came up with a wonderful name for this game, uh, and called it Foul Play. And I was like, oh my god, you're genius. You're a genius. So I thought about that last weekend. On my, on my excursion. Jules needs to make me some slippers. I agree. Jules, where's my slippers? Oh, I heard that. Tina, thank you so much, Tina. All right, Tina, let's see what we're gonna put out for you. Okay, so we're gonna put out, for Tina, we're gonna put out, let's see. Hmm. dude this guy's so cute this guy's real cute so th thank you so much by the way Tina this guy's gonna go out for you I'm thinking about calling this a swamp beanie I'm not totally sure yet but it's gonna be like a little swamp monster um, you can see his little hands I did like this really crazy thing for the hands to make these little three claws for it you can see it in the feet as well so he's got little two little toes there so I was thinking about calling this a swamp beanie. You can see his little mouth. It's got a little fit. It, it's kind of got some like um, some inspiration by uh, 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 SpongeBob. It's got some of that mouth inspiration from SpongeBob. But yeah, this is out for you. This is for you, Tina. A little swamp beanie. Pattern is not out for that just yet. So hold tight. I haven't even considered working on a pattern for that. So probably is going to be a sec. Guess <laughs> I love that. That's a great idea, Zoe. That's a great alternative name. Got to guess who. for this top hat we have to work into both loops and then the back loops and the <laughs> I got the sneezies oh hey this Monday I think this, this last week I got uh, Jules and I got our second shot for COVID for our vaccine uh, so we're almost fully vaccinated we, well, we're, we're technically we are fully vaccinated, but we have to wait a few more days for the the vaccine to be true. But the second day, man, Tuesday, I was like a zombie boy. I was like, uh. K Creations. Uh, uh, uh. So I was gonna do the halftime show after um. After I finished the wings of the queen bee, that's what I was thinking. So two rounds of 12 here, but maybe I'll do it after this top hat is done. 
I don't know. What do you think? It's just going to be a show and tell today. Not much. I mean, I do have some cool things to show you, and I have some questions for you also. But, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a show and tell today. No special story or anything. Chirp a little. Yes. Congratulations on getting your second shot as well. I'm just excited to be able to uh, do things with my life. I'm excited to go to, there's a place that I really like in San Francisco. Um, it's not called this anymore, but it was called Brewcade. It was an arcade bar. And I'm excited to go back and play, play games. Ow, ow, ow. The Honorable Judge Ari Versace Armani. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I love your name. Love the name. Oh my gosh. Gwyneth, go to bed. I appreciate you watching though, but it's so, I don't even stay up that early. And I stay up crazy early. You need to get some sleep. Well, now the CDC says that like, if we get all of our shots, we don't have to wear masks anymore, which is crazy. I think I'm still probably gonna wear my mask for a little while. Personally. But, um, it is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna do maroon or red? Red. We could do maroon, or let's do red actually to match the lips of our, um, of our queen bee later on. I think that's probably the best idea. We're gonna do the perfect stripe method for this top hat also. Yeah, I agree, Chirp a little. I think, I think, uh, yeah, the no mask thing kind of like weirds me out. It's like, how do you know someone's gotten vaxxed or not? I think we need to get tattoos. <laughs> tattoos with little numbers on them. <laughs> That's a terrible joke. <laughs> That's such a bad joke. I've been wearing my mask eight hours a day at work and my skin underneath is not loving life. Yeah, I can imagine, Zoe. That's rough. I'm so sorry. But I gotta say, I appreciate that you do that. That is like, that is commitment. Okay, Emma, thank you for watching. Pasta la pizza. My gosh, these people are so young in the chat. Some people. Yo, yo, yo. Dudes, I've been playing Pokemon Snap like all week, by the way. I don't know if anybody else got Pokemon Snap, but <laughs> it's awesome. Jules and I have been kicking butt playing Pokemon Snap a bunch. Dark humor is great. Thank you. I agree. Okay, so now I'm working on that strap. That strap for our top hat. 
You gotta make people those croissants. We need the croissants. Question, Zoe. Now, I don't know if you live in the U.S. or you're in, like, a uh, some other country. But how... What's your opinion on people saying... Uh, coming up and saying, Yes, I'd like to get one croissant. Or do you like it... Do, do you hate it when they say croissant? Or do you... Uh, or... 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 Or what? Because I feel like I would... I understand, you know, I spoke, I, I, I speak some French. If I was in France, I'm not going to say croissant. I'm going to say croissant. But like, uh, I feel like if I heard someone say, yes, I would like one croissant. Or, or even, not even an accent. They said like, yes, um, I would like one croissant. I'd be like, okay, buddy. Okay. Sure. What's your opinion? You're the pro, Zoe. Spend some time with the Irish. They love their dark humor, huh? You know, uh, I know this is not Irish, this is Scottish, but there's a um, a comedian that I love. I, I think he's so funny. He goes, uh, his name is Limey. It's called The Limey Show. It's on um, Netflix. Uh, and he's Scottish. And his humor is super dark. And it is so, so funny. I think he is one of the funniest dudes. I love it. I suggest you guys check it out if you like dark humor. Even on YouTube. I think he's got a bunch of YouTube videos too. That are really good. He had like a sketch show and now he just does, now he just plays games on uh, Twitch. It's very funny. Ooh, Omna asks, have I ever made a flamingo? Heck yeah, I made a flamingo. Uh, it's on the website. Her name is Florence, Florence the Flamingo. She's a freaking adorable. And in uh, the month after this, I think we're gonna be doing that as the crochet kit. We're gonna be doing Florence the Flamingo as like a summer crochet kit. Uh, and I'm gonna try, I'm not making any promises, but I am gonna try to make a surfboard for Florence so she can be surfing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm in, uh, and we have a lot of French speakers, really? Fair enough, fair enough. Croissant it is. I will start saying croissant uh, only to you, Zoe. Just to, just to make you uh, feel like you're at home. Or I'll, or I'll start saying it with an Aussie accent for you. Yeah, can I get uh, one croissant, please? That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Oh yeah, you know we gotta do a flamingo burb. Flaburbo. So do I do a single here or do I just do a, let's just do a slip stitch. Rebecca's got a black screen. Anybody else got a black screen there? That would not be good. That'd be that'd be one of those that'd be one of them bad things. I don't think I think it might be just you, Rebecca, but I'm not sure. I'm checking the chat. Let me know. Please. On mine it says we got excellent connection. Okay, we're good. We good. We good. Well, Rebecca's not good. Rebecca's got to figure something out.
Man, I could use uh, I could also use a croissant. I could use a chocolate croissant. Oh, so I used to um, when I was in college, I spent a year abroad, or not a year, a month. A year. I wish it was a year. A month abroad in um, Montpellier in France, and every single day I would get a pan au chocolat was freshly made oh my god it was like the best it was this little bakery that was like right next door to where i was staying in a i was like in a little apartment man i loved every single morning i would walk down and then i'd go to class it was freaking awesome it was freaking awesome man all right we're gonna add this little hat here Chirp a little, chirp a little, thank you so much. Since you mentioned croissant, want to see Mon Monsieur Quack. Oh, we can totally get Monsieur Quack on the screen for you. Oh, thank you so much for making that request too, chirp a little. I love it. For you, this is for you, chirp a little. Eh, bonjour, eh, mon ami. Je suis Monsieur Quack in the Quack Quack. <laughs> My little baguette. You got a very green, green thing going on here in the background. I kind of like it. I like that we got a theme going on. I don't have the pattern for him wearing overalls, but I should make that. That's a good question, Gwen. I will I will figure something out for you. Eventually. Eventually. Okay. We gotta keep this into in place as I sew it on. So I don't lose track of what's going on here. Tina, Jack's gonna say hi in a second. Just give him a, give him a sec. He's putting on his makeup. <laughs> I want Jack. Give us Jack. We want Jack. We want Jack. Break down the door. Spaghettios. There you go. Look at our fancy bee. This is not a worker bee. Oh my gosh. This is a this is a one percenter bee. This bee agrees that you should be investing all your money into a Roth IRA. This bumblebee has so much stocks. This bumblebee eats caviar and uh, honey together. Or does this bumblebee hold the door open for the queen? Maybe. Maybe this bumblebee is a is a is the doorman. Now there's an idea. The bumblebee doorman. There is his top hat just for you, Emily. We've got our bumblebee. Stephanie. Oui. C'est bon. Oui? C'est bon? C'est bon. Mwah. Huh? Huh? 
Huh? Opulence. This bee owns everything. We're gonna put that. We're gonna put a little bumblebee down, right over here. And let's get. Let's uh. Hey, Jackie. Jackie boy. Jackie boy, you got your top hat on. Put your top hat on. He's putting his top hat on. Hold on. Ooh. Jackery. Jickery Jackery Jock. <clears throat> Jack, your hair is getting wild, my friend. I need to give you a haircut real quick. Just real quick, makeup. Makeup on Isle Jack. All right. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the halftime show brought to you by me, Jackery Gurgle, your best friend and largest supporter of grubs. Mm -hmm. I love grubs. I like to eat them. I like to put them in my mouth then swallow them up. Uh, hey, Jack, buddy. You're in a weird position here. You want me to turn the camera a little bit for you? Why don't I do that? We're going to go like this. And we're going to bring the camera back in just a second. Hold on. It's just... It's just... Jack has an easier time when the camera's right. Yeah, right there. I like that. That's great. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello. Thank you so... Oh, Emily. Oh, that's a great idea. Emily... Hey. What's up? What's up, bud? Emily... Wait. Hold on, I gotta get into the right position here. There we go. <laughs> Emily says that you need to uh, give the queen a cake. Well, I mean, that could work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what she did? She gave me money to eat. Hello, everybody. Hey, Chirp a Little, how you doing? I heard you gave uh, Louis some money earlier, and he really appreciates that. So thank you so much. Wow. So great. Um, so today, Louis is going to uh, show you some things that he's been working on, some things that he's been making. I'm going to sit here and stare at your faces. Everything is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gwyneth. Gwyneth says... Jack Gurgle. Oh, she says, hello. Finish putting on makeup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I So here's what I did. I took a, I took a beetle. I squeezed its butt juice out, right? Butt juice is the best part of the beetle for your face. And I spread it on all, uh, all over the bottom of my eyeballs. And, and honestly, it made my eyeballs look beautiful. Beautiful butt. Beautiful butt juice on my eyes. I love it. I look so cute because of that. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Well, Louis's arm's hurting. So now he's going to um, show you some things he's been making. That's a great idea, Jack. I really, really like that idea. I don't know what you're talking about. My face wasn't in screen talking. That was Jack the whole time. Tina loves you, Jack. I love you, Tina. This kiss. I'm gonna kiss you, Tina. Jack, that's not a kiss. That's a bite. You taste like lavender. <laughs> Isn't that how you get pink eye? Cooperlicious has a really good point, Jack. She thinks that you're gonna get pink eye because of the uh, the whole the whole butt juice thing, the beetle butt juice, but. We'll see how it goes. Let's turn this camera back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it was like right here. All right. Okay, guys. So here's what we're going to be doing for today's live, today's uh, halftime show. We're going to do a little bit of show and tell because it's been like two weeks and I have been making some things. So the first thing that I want to show you is um, that neck crack. And then I also need to turn this there. There we go. Um, so, over the weekend when I was at uh, when I was on vacation, I had this idea. I was like, "Oh, you know, what'd be really cool. What if I made a um, a rubber band gun?" 
And Jules was like, you can't do a rubber band gun. And I said, Jules, I can do a rubber band gun. And she said, I'll bet you 50 bucks you can't do a rubber band gun. And I said, I'll take that bet. And then I crocheted a rubber band gun. Now, it's not wonderful. It's definitely just a prototype. I don't know if I'm ever going to come out with a tutorial for it. But it does work totally. So here's how it works. There's a series of stakes throughout the center of it. Um, each one of these hides a stake. So there's a stake going through the center here, another stake going through right here. The stake going through here holds this part in. So this stake in. And then this stake holds is for the handle, right? And then there's a little cardboard trigger that I made that goes through the top. You can barely see it up there at the top there. And it holds the rubber band in. Now the rubber band's supposed to go on the end here. It's kind of hard to get it on the end because that little tip isn't really, doesn't really hold it in place. So let me try to, it does, but like just barely, see? And then you just pull the trigger and it shoots, ready? Boom, rubber band gun, baby. And you just load it up like that. And you can shoot it, you can shoot it from the bottom part here, but it doesn't really shoot as far. It does shoot though. So, that's my first creation. She bet me a hundred bucks to do that. And uh, so I, I'm not a hundred bucks, 50 bucks. So I made 50 bucks off of my girlfriend. No big deal, whatever. Uh, I didn't really though. Uh, she's just gonna, she just bought dinner. <laughs> so that is the first thing that I really wanted to show you guys is this super cool rubber band gun. Now the design is all right. You know, I think I could do a little bit better. I was trying to kind of going for like a bit of like a space shooter laser gun feel for it and uh yeah i think it works you know it is pretty cool it's pretty cool let's we're gonna shoot monster quack here boom baby you've been straight shooted yeah i think the biggest the biggest part about making the for bang gun that i wanted to do was uh was that I didn't have anything up in uh, when I was there because you know we weren't near any city so like there was no hot glue there was no like all I had was stakes yarn cardboard and a rubber band and I was like I can do this I can figure this out and it totally worked so I think it's pretty cool pretty happy it, with it um, squishiest gun I know that's what Charlie says and I agree it's a very squishy gun so we'll put this right here um, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you the next thing I wanted to show you um, I've been working on oh Jane buy yourself some <laughs> J hey Jack Jane Jane gave you five bucks to buy some uh, yummy grubs with oh wow grubs you know how I love them grubbies Jane thank you so much Dude, you're going to mess up the whole camera. What the heck? <laughs> Thank you so much, Jane. I'll put something out for you just a second. Let me fix that camera that Jack broke. It's all his fault, not mine. And, uh, uh, yeah. So thank you so much, Jane. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what. This is what we're going to put out for you. We're going to put out these new characters that I've been working on for Stitched. Now, they're not finished yet. Uh, this is why I need your advice. So... They're called, hold on, hold on, I'm fixing this guy up. Here we go. They're called fling clingers, okay? So basically how they work, I, I, I'm still putting these out for the, um, for like the play testers for, for Stitched. So I have this like little group that helps me play test uh, new things that I'm trying to add for Stitched. Um, but basically these are little mushroom guys that they're kind of like work as tu turrets. And you can see they, they basically have the exact same face as the octopus does. You see, I did like the fa same face, but on a mushroom. And what they do is they stick and then they shoot, they shoot little things at characters and they stick on the heads of, of characters so they can stay on the head of like an enemy or, or your own character. And then you move around and then they like stay on their head. So that's the. That's the new thing, but I don't know which eyes I like best. So which one do you think works best? Do you like these um, vertical eyes like this? Or do you like the horizontal eyes like that? What do you think? This thing in the mouth here is so that you can measure the distance. So they shoot from a distant distance away. So you, they shoot from this far away. You see, hold on, let me turn this on back on the manual focus. So it stops 
focusing in and out. So it's like if there's if you're right here and there's another character that's like right here, you can shoot them from this far away. So that's how that's how these characters work. And then there's a little string on the inside to help you pull that back in. So that's one thing that I really wanted. I wanted to know what your opinion was. Which one you like vertical? Ooh, vertical eyes, vertical eyes. Cooperlicious like the vertical eyes. Crafty chats like vertical eyes. Let me know. Keep them coming. We got two horizontal, three vertical. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, yeah. So that's the next thing. They're called fling clingers, uh, and I really, really like them. I'm super duper into them. Uh, another thing I'm working on. So basically, what I'm okay. So here, here's the lowdown, guys. Here's here's the lowdown. Okay, I'm gonna give you the lowdown because you're here. I don't know how many people are gonna be watching this later, so it's probably gonna be somewhat secretive. Um, I think I've kind of talked about this. Um, ooh, Jane thinks the vertical is is scarier. I like that. I think I like that. So the lowdown is, I'm I'm gonna be doing a Kickstarter um, for Stitched. I'm working on a book, um, which is like it's split into three parts. Like here's how to play Stitched, here's how to make Stitched, and here's how to crochet Stitched. And so what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to set up is if the Kickstarter like gets enough, then I'm gonna do an expansion pass for the game, which includes like a bunch of vegetation creatures. So like the fling clingers. There's another character called the fungaloids, which I know you guys have seen. They're like the mushroom men, um, stuff like that. So that's what I'm kind of working on. I just basically wanted to make mushrooms. That's the real truth. Um, but I just thought these guys were really cool. And to add to it, I wanted to make another character for the game. Uh, and you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna like this. Ready? It's an ant. Made an ant. Uncle Ant here. Now, I feel like it's really dark. Is the screen really dark? Maybe not, I don't know. Um, he's an Ent, he stands up like this, see? He's got this little, um, I've got a, a single um, nail, or a needle that goes in and it's covered up by his little beard here to help him stand up, like that, right? And what his plan, how he works is that, uh, you can ride him in the game, so you can actually like, he's a mount, so you can you can have a character like right on top of his head, and move, move around. Um, I really like it. What I think is really cool about this dude is, do you see these stitches on the back here? Gosh, it feels like it's so dark. Is it? No, I guess not. Let's see, maybe I can change this. Does that brighten it up a little bit? Yeah, there we go. Like right there. Um, so what I really like, you see these stitches on the back? Instead of doing a single crochet, I did, um, I don't know what it's called. It looks like the seed stitch from knitting, um, which I really liked the idea that it was called the seed stitch, you know, because we're making a tree. Um, but it's also kind of the, uh, it might be the moss stitch. I'm not really sure, but I really like the idea that the stitch, the stitches for his bark are a little bit different than the rest of him. Um, so yeah. Is this pattern in rough drafts? No, it is not. I, you know, cause I just made them this week. So he's not in rough drafts. Neither are these guys. They will be in rough drafts, uh, pr probably pretty soon. So um, I just need to put a little bit more effort into the rough drafts in general. Um, I'm working on a new thing for the rough drafts so that not like only a certain amount of people could sign up for rough drafts because I don't want it to be like, I really want to get feedback on it. And I think one thing that I'm having a trouble getting is feedback so I'm trying to like make it so if you sign up for a rough draft you have to provide feedback if you want to get to sign up for a future rough draft as well so that's kind of what I'm working on um, but rough drafts will be coming out soon so yeah I made an ent this week I made some of these fling clingers let's see what else did I make this week oh and I made the, the gun oh another thing that I made is Oh. So I I was also working on some new items for the game too. Um, this is you know it's kind of funny because I might not even be coming out with these for the game eventually. I don't know. I probably will just come out with them 
uh, sending it to like people, but I just got to the idea where I'm like, oh, what if it gets a, what if this Kickstarter does really, really well? Oh, I should do a, you know, expansion pack. So the other thing that I made was a little slingshot, right? There's this little slingshot with this little spiky ball on the end. And the idea is it's like a spike ball that you like pew, you shoot at people. And then it does, it does like so much damage when it hits. And then it does damage each turn until you remove the spike ball from your character. So that's something else that I made um, this weekend. And then I worked on the book a lot this week. So it was a very heavy stitched week, honestly. Um, uh, and yeah, I just, you know, I just love, I just love stitched a lot. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Also, there's this cool little orc. I didn't make this this, this week, this week, but uh, he's just super cute. So I like him a lot. And I brought him out so that he could hold the um, the slingshot. See, you have this like long end here. This is how I do all my weapons. Is I make them with um, with pipe cleaners. I'm gonna come out with a tutorial soon about like how I make weapons. But I make them with pipe cleaners. Then I wrap them in yarn and stuff. And then I leave the end of the pipe cleaner open like this, so that you can put it in the hands of all your characters. So it actually can go in their hands like that, so you can be holding it. So. Pretty cool, pretty cool. He's also got this hat that can be removed. So these are the things I made this week. Um, I am going to leave out this fling clinger for Jane. It's gonna be right there. I'm gonna take these guys out of here, right there. I hope you guys like this halftime uh, show and tell. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the chat. I'd be happy to tell you anything. And uh, yeah, look out, look out soon for that, um, more stuff about that Kickstarter. It's probably gonna be in August. Um, me and my friend Nicole are working on it really heavily right now and the book is, um, is looking really good. I gotta say, I'm, I'm really, really proud of how the book's looking and stuff. So I'm, I'm ex very, very, very excited about it. Let's turn this brightness down just a little, like right there maybe. That might've been where we were before, but that's okay. Okay, let's get this guy out there a little bit. We got our we got our bumblebee, fancy bumblebee here in the corner. Having a hard time standing up, but that's okay. All right, so next up we can continue crocheting. Oh, by the way, if you haven't yet, please, um, uh, please like and subscribe down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing? Subscribe. But also like this video. Please like this video. It helps this spread out to more people um, and more people end up, it, it ends up getting more views and stuff. So I really appreciate it if you liked it. Um, it's, the, it's the freest and cheapest way for you to help support this channel. And then obviously, if you'd like to help support this channel with a membership, I would definitely appreciate it. Um, it does go to a good cause, that being more patterns written. Uh, and I'm going to download this bumblebee pattern real quick, add it to my books on my... Addy asks, how do you know to stuff enough without overstuffing something? Um, the best, I it, it really just takes like, um, I don't know, like guessing kind of, but also it's, uh, uh, you definitely know if you've overstuffed it, if you can see the stuffing through your crochet. Um, that is pretty much the main way. If you can see your stuffing through the stitches, let me give you a good example actually. This is, this is a, um, a hobgoblin that I made that he's like a chef hobgoblin and he is like, almost overstuffed and the way you can tell is you see how like you can kind of see let me zoom in here. you can kind of see how the stuffing is starting to show through right there so he is not overstuffed but man is he is he's pushing it close um this also could be uh this depends on how tightly you crochet so if you crochet really tightly it's more difficult to overstuff your creature or your character 
Whereas if you understuff, or if you crochet really loosely, um, it'll be way easy, it'll be very easy to see this, your, your stuffing through the creature. Okay. Silk asks, okay, that's a great question. Okay, so Silk says, recently, at least you've seen, that more and more people are talking negative to me about crocheting. They say it's boring, it's for old ladies, and that I need to find a better hobby. How do I handle such negative critic comments? Um, easy. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, that's just the truth of the matter. When people say that crocheting is for old ladies or whatever, they think that you're crocheting blankets or maybe you're crocheting a sweater, making granny squares, whatever. You just need to show them that like, you guys have such a limited idea of what crochet is. Crochet is anything. The, your imagination, you can make it with crochet. You can make puppets, you can make toys, you can make anything that you want you can make rubber band guns you can make like games anything that you want you can make into crochet so i think that's the best way to explain it is that like crocheting is not what you think it is anymore it used to be no doubt like 20 30 years ago yeah crocheting was making blankets and making uh sweaters and stuff but now it's all about amigurumi, baby. Crochet is about amigurumi, and amigurumi is nothing like you've ever seen before. Um, yeah, I think that's the best way is just to, first off, just to like shut those criticisms down. They don't know what they're talking about. Um, so, yeah, like they just don't know what they're talking about. But also, prove it to them. Show them, crochet something and be like, First off, look at how quickly I made this. If you're making little amigurumi, that's really easy. One, two, three, six. Um, so it's really easy to make, you know, stuff really fast. So there cuts out the boring part right away. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. It's ten. Um, it's fun. It's easy. You get to make some seriously in incredible things with crochet now that you weren't able to do before. Um, I just really think that, uh, I, I strongly believe that people that say that crocheting is boring or lame or whatever, uh, have no idea what crochet really is. They think, they think crochet is making something silly and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Same as Addy, I do not have the patience to crochet a blanket. I've made one blanket, and I didn't even make a whole blanket. I made half of a blanket once. Uh, it was really fun to do for, like, the first half of a half of a blanket. But, yeah, I agree. Making blankets is super-duper boring. So, that's not what I do. <laughs> you know? Crocheting, it can be whatever you want it to be. Also, the things that were lame then, like 20 years ago, are not lame anymore. Like, you know, people would say, uh, uh, like, like when I was in high school, World of Warcraft was like still pretty nerdy. It was like a really nerdy thing to do. I still played World of Warcraft, but it was nerdy. But now, like those nerd, like Dungeons and Dragons, that's like barely nerdy anymore. People freaking love Dungeons and Dragons. It's cool. Like, things that were nerdy once are now cool to other people, which that's just the way things go. Yeah, agree with Chirp a little. People that who don't like it can bug off or or you can prove to them that it is way cooler than they think it is. That's that's always been my reaction is like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, you think it's one thing, let me show you. 
Let me show you how much crochet can be. So I'm making the crown for our, um, our queen bee right now, by the way. If you are crocheting along with me. short yeah I would even argue that not only should you not like give it up never give up on crocheting but also like uh, I, I really think you should um, prove to people that crocheting is way cooler than they think it is by just making some dope ass things. Oops. I try not to curse if I can avoid it, but <laughs> you hear my California coming through. Um, dope. I say dope a lot. Like what else do they think is lame, you know? Or what do they think is cool? Sports? <laughs> Sports are lame, dude. Sports are lame. <laughs> Some are. I don't know. I never I never was a sports dude. Never really got into it. I skateboarded. But that's kind of not really a sport. I mean, it is a sport, definitely. But it's not like what people think about when they think sports. They think like basketball and football and stuff. Which, uh, yeah, never was really into those. I like dodgeball. They called your grandma. I mean, I think the best way to deal with criticism of any kind is to, like, to, like, uh, absorb it. Like, like like go with it go with it you know don't do not uh the worst thing you could do to criticism is is be like no i'm not because then people know that they're gonna get a reaction out of you if you say like no i'm not a grandma then suddenly everybody's like ooh. if i tease them about being like a grandma i know i'm gonna get a reaction out of them Instead being like, yeah, I'm the coolest grandma you, you've you ever met. <laughs> like, your grandma wishes she was me. That's how that's how I like to, uh, to work off criticism that is lame. There's, a, there's an episode of The Office where Jim tells, um, tells, uh, Michael that that's how he should, that's how how he should uh, react to, to being teased. And uh, I totally agree with that. I think that's the best way to do it. Go with it. No one wants to tease someone that's teasing themselves. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true actually, but I do think that it is one way to fight off teasing. I think long story short, the real answer is there are a lot of people in this world and <laughs> there's more every single day. And you know what? You can't, you can't make everybody like you. Some people are going to think you, what you're doing is stupid or silly, um, but other people won't. So find the people that won't. And do not give any peace of mind to the people that do think that what you're doing is silly. Speaking of, I just made a little tiny crown for a little tiny crocheted bee, okay? In this world, I just made a little tiny, out of yarn, I crocheted a tiny crown. <laughs> That's what I did today. And I love it. I think it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and I... I am a straight dude that just crocheted a crown and and yeah sometimes I do get people that say like 
crocheting is for grandmas or, or it's too feminine or whatever. And I just tell them like, dude, get your, get, get your life in check. Like <laughs> the world is, life is too short and the world is too big for you to care about things like that. You're living in the, in the year 2021. Like gender norms now, <laughs> gender norms are not a thing anymore. Don't care. Do not care what you think about me. Unless you think I'm cool. Then I agree. <laughs> A rainbow pillow. Hell yeah. That's what you're making right now, Silk? Dude, that's awesome. I want a rainbow. You know who would love a rainbow pillow? My girlfriend. She would love a rainbow pillow. Be careful, careful, Gwyneth. You don't want to cut your finger off. You need that thing. You need them fingies. <laughs> I think you're very cool as well, Zoe. One, two, three. Six, seven, and eight. Okay, so check out how these wings are made, right? These wings are super cool. You basically like work around it and it's something I call a pivot. Um, it's when you like flip your piece upside down. I don't know what it's actually called, but I think pivot's a really good way to explain it. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna like slowly work up to the edge of this crochet here and then I'm gonna turn around. So we're gonna go one, Half. Here, let me zoom in here so you can actually see what's going on. Might help out a little bit. So it goes single, half, and then two doubles. One. And then two. And then a triple crochet right here. And then, uh-oh, did I mess up somewhere? Oh no, there's two triple crochets, I get it. Okay, so check this out. This is like one side of the wing, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do five double crochets in this last chain, and it's gonna like basically force me to spin around and turn around the other way and work on the other side of the chains. This technique for crocheting is like really useful for making um, things like leaves or wings, obviously. One, two, three. <laughs> We're getting some yellow yarn joining us. Four. And then one more. Five. So it kind of like, it like forces us to spin it around and then we work along the back side as well. And I think we just do the same thing backwards. Yeah. And then I like to work around this tail end as I'm going. One, two. I really like these wings because using these weird stitches, like using triple crochets and double crochets and stuff, makes these wings look more like, um, look more like wings to me, you know, instead of doing, um, cause often what people do for wings is they'll, uh, they'll just crochet in the round, um, and make like basically a tube and then sew that, make that tube flat and then sew that tube on there, which gives a lot of sturdiness to a wing, but it doesn't make it look like a wing. It makes it look like, you know, a, another piece of the body. But I like the fact that uh, I like using different stitches for different parts to, um, to really make, uh, them pop out, you know, make them make them look different than the rest of the body. Yeah. Okay, let me zoom this back out now. We're gonna have to make two of these wings though. And 
then a half double? Yeah, half double and then a single. just chain one we'll cut this end and what's great is when you do this wing it leaves these two ends to sew it onto the body so you let you have something to work with and you see how it like makes this little line you know I just love these wings I think they're super cool um, and super simple cool let's keep going Alex, hey, welcome. Good day. Good day, Alex. Another Aussie here. We got Zoe and Alex. Any other any other Aussies in the chat? Is there any other? Four, six, seven, and eight. So Jules and I have been watching um well we watched a couple of things. One, and let me know if you have also checked out any of these shows, because uh, I'd love to talk to you about it. I Don't worry, I won't spoil anything for either of these. There's not really much to spoil anyhow. But the first one that we started watching was um, a show called Shadow and Bone. I think that's what it's called. It's It's got like some Avatar The Last Airbender feels to it, but it's live action. It's on Netflix now, and it's basically like... A, this fantasy world where there's this really big shadow thing that's covering up a forest and uh, you can't pass through it. It's super cool. It's all live action, you know? It's not like animated and the acting in it is is pretty good. Um, and the story is like super duper cool. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's a super cool show. We powered through the first season of it that just came out on Netflix, and now we're like, oh, I want more already. Um, oh, really? Crafty Chats C Cafe doesn't like it. I think it's super cool. You need to... Have you watched the whole thing? Because the whole season, I think, is super cool, personally. I was really into it. Um, and then the other thing that we've been watching is... Uh, is not as cool, but I still love it because I, sometimes I just love that garbage, um, garbage like reality TV. You know, sometimes you just like to watch it. So I've been watching The Circle on Netflix, which is like a, it's like a reality show. It's dumb. Honestly, it's a really silly, dumb show, but it's super fun to watch. <laughs> it's, it's really fun to watch. Wow, lots of torn torn opinions on the Shadow and Bone show. I think it was really cool, but Rebecca and Silk, no, Rebecca and Crafty Chats, not into it. You know, to each their own. Did you like, do you like Avatar The Last Airbender? Because it has some of that feels to it, at least in the, um, the actual powers of the show. It was called Shadow and Bone. And then the other show that I was saying, uh, the the one reality show is called, um, that one's called The Circle. And it's basically like a bunch of people, they're in their own little apartments in this big, big like hotel. And they can't ever see each other, but they can all chat on like a, like an app basically. And so they all talk to each other and then you become like an influencer. Uh oh hello uh oh hold on did I fix it how's that is that better got all fuzzy well I think I fixed it let me know let me know if I fixed it I w 
I won't do. It's good. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. So I've made the... Here, thank you. Thank you for letting me know that the audio got weird. I don't know why that happened. That's so strange that it just like randomly got weird audio. Um, okay, so now I'm making... Uh, I'm finally starting on our queen bee. Hello, Ryza from the Philippines. One, two, three, four. All right. Let me see something real right, real right quick, like. All right, that's a little Okay. Just making sure everything was working right. Hey, if you like this video, um, you know, you should, you know, you should think about doing, you know, it'd be really cool. Now, this is just a random, completely random thought. Just thinking about right now. If you like this video, maybe you should like it down below. I mean, that'd be cool. I don't know. I don't know. You think about it. If you think that, it's just, it, I think it'd be, might, it might be cool. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought we could do that together. You know, like, like this video or something. Uh, stop. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Abfab de Arte, <laughs> de Art, uh, said that they made a spider the other day and used eight single crochets in the magic circle. I started doing that too for certain patterns. You know, I don't do it for all of them, but I also started to like up the amount of single crochets that I do in a magic circle so that I could use more um, based on, you know, whatever I'm making, if I need a little bit more, a little bit bigger in the beginning. Um, oh. Do you hear that? Oh my gosh. Um, oh, do you think I can crack my, let's see, we'll do hands. We'll do hands first, ready? I'll drop, I drop my eyes. <laughs> yes, queen, hit that like button. <laughs> Love it, Cooperlicious. <laughs> Um, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, doing eight single crochets in a magic circle. That's smart too, because you're going to need eight legs for your, for your spider. So keeping it within the eight stitches instead of the six stitches. So like right now I'm doing it by sixes. So I single crocheted six times and then I increased six and therefore everything's going to be divisible by six. But if you do that with eight, that's really smart because then when it comes time to put the feet on, you're going to need eight legs. So you're going to have the right spot for all eight legs. I think that's really smart. Um, yeah, that's really good. That's a good move. What are Jules, Jimbo, and Phoebe doing? <laughs> uh, they are in the other room playing video games. Uh, Jules, I think Jules might be playing DDR. I'm not really sure. Um, but, uh, they are not allowed in this room right now. Phoebe, Phoebe and Jimbo are not allowed in this room because Jules is currently blocking uh, a sweater that she made. Um, if you don't know what blocking is, uh, I don't blame you because you probably make amigurumi like I do and you don't need to block amigurumi. But if you're a knitter or if you crochet like, um, a sweater or something, Often you need to block it, which means that you get it wet with hot water uh, and then you like pin it down on this big pad uh, and and you like stretch it out and pin it down to the exact position that you want it to be in. And then when it dries, it stays a little bit more into that position. So it lets you get more um, stretch out of it. It lets it, it's just like what you got to do when you're 
when you're making garments and stuff. So she has something blocking right now, a sweater that she made that's got like, it's like green and fuzzy. You actually, if you saw the, um, if you saw the Loop and Pearl episode from this week, you probably saw it. It's like a very fuzzy green sweater. And uh, so it needs to be blocked and dried and we can't let the cats in because they start to scratch it because it has to be dried on the floor because it's the only place that has enough room for it. Yeah, exactly, crafty chats. I, if blocking and animals are not friends because if they touch it even a little bit, it could screw up the whole like blocking process and it's just really annoying. It relaxes fibers, exactly, thank you. That's exactly right. Kristen, you're back, welcome back. Yeah, you learn the hard way when you yeah, and it's such, a, it's so annoying because then you just gotta like redo it again and it's like, oh, I have to re-block this and keep it in this room without anything touching it. It's just like, it's just frustrating. I'm gonna turn this camera down a little bit since I'm gonna start relaxing a little bit. How long have we been going for? Two and a half hours, that's not bad. Probably go for We'll probably go to like three hours realistically for this little queen bee because we need to sew everything on, add the face and stuff like that. We're going pretty quick though. Yeah, exactly. It can make them softer sometimes as well. It's totally right. What hook size is that? I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. Here you can kind of see it right there. Let me zoom in. Jiggle it. Yeah, see? G four millimeter crochet hook. I'm currently using a clover crochet hook. Uh, I really like the clover hook just because this I like this rubber handle. Um, it helps me stuff pieces in and stuff. But uh, there's a lot of different crochet hooks that have a very similar uh, feel. I also like um, the soft end on this crochet hook. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of when the end is like isn't like too pointy or isn't too like. Uh, the edge right here isn't too sharp because if you have a sharp edge uh, you can sometimes split your yarn by like getting in between the yarn so I like using uh, softer edges definitely when I'm making amigurumi yeah our cat Phoebe really likes to use um, really likes to uh, mess up fabric that's blocking. She is the real culprit. She'll she'll run in to just like lay on it. And it's like, oh, why do you want to lay on that so bad? Nah, mean, nah, mean. Okay, so next up we're going to be making, uh, we're going to start our stripes for our queen bee. Grab our black yarn. Ooh, I never heard of tulip crochet hooks. Make it with Alex is talking about tulip hooks. Never heard of that. I'll have to check them out. I'd really love to get some like handmade wooden crochet hooks that are like really cool and handmade and stuff but I don't know if that's gonna happen anytime soon so I'm doing that perfect stripe method again for our queen bees stripes
If I tried furls, is furls a, a crochet hook? I haven't ever heard of furls before. Whoa, Rebecca's making a super tiny bumblebee. That, oh man, that'd be really cool. I should do that too. That's a great idea. I love that idea. I, I really want to make a little tiny bumblebee. Using like embroidery thread. What, how big is the thread you're using, Rebecca? I'm guessing the thread is probably going to work with whatever crochet hook you're using, so it's probably a very tiny thread. Yeah, almost a life-size bee. Oh my god, that'd be so cute. Oh, that's what furls is beautiful handmade wooden handles. Oh, that sounds great though, but expensive. A bumblebee. I'm just a little bumblebee. Yeah, that sounds like it takes a lot of uh, focus, Rebecca. You're making it with that magnifying glass? Yeah, well, that, I feel like you'd need a magnifying glass. That's super cool, though. Oh, man, I'd love to try that out. There you go. Right, get started on that next round and I can cut this yellow yarn off, untangle everything. A boomalabee. Oh, are you a boomalabee? Oh, I love the boomalabees. I have to love the boomalabees. Maybe our worker bee, like the, the top hat bee there, is like our queen bee's, you know, right hand man. Maybe it's her boyfriend. <gasps> Maybe. Do bumblebees bumble? That's not how bees work. That's not how bees work, Lou. <laughs> Ooh, I should make the bees fuzzy. You know, if I had fuzzier yarn I could do that I should get some like really fuzzy black and yellow yarn black and yellow okay so now I'm on to round nine and I'm gonna decrease down a little bit Five and six. 
You know, do you think a hair comb would work on this? Uh, I have actually a hair comb right here, so we'll try it out. I don't know if it'll work on the cotton though. But it might, it could, it may. It's worth a shot. Have I heard of the game Cuphead? Of course I've heard of the game Cuphead. I tried to beat Cuphead. It is like really hard though. It's fun though. And I love the style. It's so fun to look at. There's so much detail that goes into that. If you ever heard of Cuphead, Cuphead is a game. It's like a, um, it's kind of like a scroll shooter game, like the old arcade games. But it has uh, everything is made in the like a 1920s like slapstick kind of cartoon way. Like think original Mickey Mouse cartoons. It's made like that. It's really really wonderful art. Um, and it's actually made in that same style of like hand illustrated um, creation. So it's it's very very impressively made game. Let's see one two three four five six. Uh, but it's hard. It's a very difficult video game. Honestly, it's it's kind of like one of those games that's more fun to watch someone play on Twitch, in my opinion, than it is to actually play it because. Actually playing it is just so difficult. Yeah, it's so difficult. Yeah, very steampunk punk willy looking. Yeah, or steamboat willy, steampunk, steampunk willy. That's a different. That's a totally different thing. <laughs> A nail file. Oh, really? Dude, that's a really, really good tip. I will totally try that out. I'll try, so a nail file with cotton yarn, you say, makes it fuzzy. That is worth a shot, for sure. I will try that out. Okay, so next is all yellow, so I can just take a break from this crazy color change shenanigans. going for two and a half hours all right yeah I think we can finish in about a half an hour from now three hour live stream that's pretty that's pretty regular for me at this point a coarse nail file okay okay I'll have to go over to Walgreens and get one because I don't really want to use my own nail file to crochet or to like, you know, use on my yarn. Ew. Get nail, nail bits in there. This is my special yarn nail file. Okay, so now we're on to round 11.
Oh, okay. Metal or glass? Because the paper nail files flake off into the yarn. Yeah, and that wouldn't be fun, would it? Cool. Man, that is such a good tip. I'm I, I love that. I've never heard of that before. Okay, almost done with my yellow stripe here, which is nice. another round of just black no not yet I gotta add the face next yay huzzah we'll get the next round started so we can cut the yarn like that and then we'll add our face All right, so we're gonna use eight millimeter eyes for this face. It's a little bit bigger. Okay. We'll go in this round. Maybe like here. That's pretty good. And then like here maybe. What is my favorite pattern on the site? That's what Sunshine wants to know. I would say that my favorite, I have two favorite patterns on the website. Um, well, I, I mean, I love all my patterns, but I think my favorite, favorite ones are either the um, goblins. I love the goblins because they're quick, easy, take basically no sewing. Or um, the T-Rex. I really love my T-Rex pattern. Oh, and the Triceratops too. Man, there's a lot of them. I love, I, I love them all though. I wonder if I do this. Let's let's finish the mouth before I sew on. Okay, now we want to add some lips. And I want to make sure everything's right before I like knot it together, you know? Well, maybe actually, I think I have to knot this down first. So let's go ahead and knot this real quick. Yeah, Rebecca, take a break off your mini B. That thing's probably giving you a headache. Give it a give it a sec. Come back to it. Work on something else. Okay. 
Right in there. Put that. How does that look? Uh oh. <laughs> it disappeared. I, I sewed it on too tightly. There we go. I fix. I fix it. Oh, it's so cute. I I actually might just keep it like that. Now nah, we can try. Let's try. Let's try some leaps. See how it goes. If it goes poorly, we'll just undo it. We just won't. Oh, here's the red yarn. On it. Yarn everywhere. Let's try the lips. I, I see what you're saying there, Trip a Little, with uh, doing a tongue instead of lips, but I think I really, I, I really like doing the lips because it makes it look very um, queeny. Queeny. But the trick is here, you gotta do some like fancy stuff there. Actually, I don't know if I'm liking this. It's a little cartoony maybe. Ugh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Get it out of here. Get these lips out of here. They're creeping me out. <laughs> Get them out of here. You're creeping me out. Alright, maybe we will try the tongue. But here's the, now here's the problem with getting the, doing the tongue is that I have to get up. I don't want to go up. Okay, well, let's try. Let's see if we can do some, some, some cute little eyeliner first. And then I'll decide to get up. Maybe we won't do we won't do the red lips because they looked weird and they creeped me out. Ooh, Kim Possible style. I like that. I like where you're going with that. We can try that. I think it because my because because I don't have any pink yarn with me. Okay, we're loving those. Look at that. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff right there. Oh, love it. Yes. Yes, queen. The queen's got a, uh, ooh, maybe, maybe that's what this bee is. It's his, it's her, it's her makeup guy. Makeup bumblebee, maybe. Yeah, I like that. See, so we got eyeliner, and then we'll do eyeliner on this side. Just like this. You're looking fabulous, queen. Love it.
What if we give her a little bit of blush? What do we think about that? So we got we got those eyes. Now I'm just gonna lock these eyes in because they're perfect. I love them. Like this, yes, cheeks. Okay, cool. We'll do cheeks. We'll do a little bit of blush for the cheeks. Then we can still use our red. We don't have to get up. <laughs> Let's try it out. I'm thinking like down here. Like the eyeliner and the cheeks might be a little bit much though. too much I just think that the mouth might need to go lower I'm kind of thinking maybe not actually like does that look confusing at all no, I guess not all right, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. She looks like she's got little strawberry cheeks. Ooh, I would love to do a touch of actual blush, but I don't have any actual blush. Maybe Jules does, but oh, that seems like a lot of effort. <laughs> Why don't we add these? We'll see. Watercolor. Oh, that's not bad. Then we're thinking like right here. Let's try it. We can always remove these later as well. If we don't like them. But I kind of like that actually. I feel like they should go higher up though. Pastel crayon for the blush on the cheek. Okay, so we, we can ask Jules. How about this? We'll leave these ones there. We'll finish our guy up, and then we'll we'll see what Jules thinks. If she's got any um anything that we could use for this cheeks to replace these yarn ones. Give it a shot. Because I, I definitely want to finish it before I do that anyhow, because like I don't want to be touching it a bunch while I'm finishing, you know?
Yeah, you're right. Pink probably would be better for the cheeks, though. But we'll finish it first, and then we'll come back for the mouth later. Um, okay, so we did that. So we did it. And then the crown and the wings. Okay, so let's start with the crown right there. Oh, my God, that's so cute. That's, like, so cute. I like that the, see the reason I don't know, well other than the fact that I'm a lazy bum, but the other reason that I don't necessarily want to do pink is because I like that the red of the cheeks matches the red of the crown. It's kind of like the crown is actually like part of her body. Oh, there's Jules. Great, good timing. I can't help but hear my name. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we might need your assistance here. Okay, so first off, you want to say hi? Yes, hello. Where, where am I in the shot? Because you're smack in the middle. Hello. Mm. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'll be right here. What's What am I assisting with? What am I so doing? So we're talking about maybe changing these cheeks and using actual blush. Actual blush. Oh. The blush I have is pretty light because I'm pretty light. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not going to show up as saturated as... These yeah, well, that's lines. that's kind of what that's kind of one of the like reasons. Lipstick or something. How about lipstick? I feel like lipstick is gonna be way too much because we they were actually saying this is too much. This is too oh. red. They were thinking maybe we change it to pink, and then uh, they were talking about maybe even using watercolors for it instead. Yeah, I'm just nervous that the blush I have is super powdery and glittery. It's just gonna get everywhere and it won't be concentrated where you want it. Mm -hmm. And it's just gonna look like someone spilled something on your piece. <laughs> so that's why I was suggesting like a lipstick where you could control it a little more, make it as um, dense of a color as needed, you know, by applying less Would lipstick more. be like, um... Oh, eyeshadow is like a good idea, Divine Rose Night Glow Eyeshadow. That's, I don't know if I have red eyeshadow or pink eyeshadow either. I don't wear a lot of makeup, folks. <laughs> not wearing any now. Um, yeah. Could you snag some... Uh, let, let's see what... Um, I'll bring options. Yeah, bring options. Okay. Good ears. My goodness, that crown though. Lipstick's the, yeah, too sticky. Not lipstick, it never dries, okay. The more glitter the better. Maybe a dot of felt, that might work. You gotta love the crown, though. Ah! I hit the camera! The camera! So people are saying that lipstick is a really bad idea Why? because it's too greasy and it never dries. Mm, so I would disagree if you with touch that it, only, I would disagree with that only um, because it depends on how much you use. Again, we're, I can't talk to them. Hello. Yeah. Well, um, I think Abby Fab is yeah. like a, uh, she, I think she does this a lot with yeah. hers. Okay. Then, um, well, here's the deal. The blush I have here is just way too light. It's not going to be such a cute and, 
look at the applying tool too. Yeah, the applying um, tool. Not here's good. what I recommend: this that. pink eyeshadow. Yeah, that will work. And there's a little applying. Purple, tool I kind of like too. Yeah. Yeah, this is. This but be careful good. in your light box. I would put like a paper towel down and let me grab you one. Sure. Okay. And I'm also gonna grab you some mini tips. Yeah. Thank you. We'll do it. We'll do it after we finish our character too. So we're not gonna. We're not gonna do it right away. Let's get these cheeks out of here. And we'll experiment instead. I think the eyeshadow is going to be your best bet. Yeah. Here are paper towels and Q-tips for you to use them. Come cool, on, thank you. Uh, you can just put them, uh, mm -hmm. the, yeah, down there is good. Okay, Q-tips are on your computer. Cool. Thank you so much. Hi bye everybody. Hi bye. Thank you, Jules. I mean, yeah, we could test it out. We'll we'll make a little I'll make a little yellow ball that we can test it out on before I do it. <laughs> Once we finish this. We'll put this to the side for right now. Needle felt is not a bad idea too. That's a good idea. I don't know if I, I actually think I might have pink needle felt. Okay, so what we're gonna do, start by sewing on our wings and then we'll finish up our whole queen and then we'll come back and do the cheekies. Thank you so much for all your guys' suggestions, by the way. watercolor oh, I wish I I do have watercolor somewhere but it's just so like it's gonna be like buried in a closet or something it's gonna be such an effort to find it okay I'm gonna go boom be doom be doom She's so pretty. Crafters, together, strong. You should definitely go with the long neck burb, Gwyneth. That's my suggestion. Long, long burb. Whew, I might need some coffee in a second too. Let's get this other wing on first though. Getting dislocated shoulders out there. You're crocheting too hard. Uh oh, my my computer, my no, my iPad. I forgot to plug my iPad in, and it died. I gotta reopen it. Okay, we'll let it. We'll let it recharge. It did. D E D did. That's what I use to read the chat. And I done forgot about it. They warned me a bunch too. They said, hey, your, your thing's gonna die. And I was like, yeah, but come on, like, is it though? And then it 
did it though. Okay, we're back. Cool. I killed it. Okay, so we got some wings. I agree, Zoe. Thank you so much for everybody being so, so nice in the chat. Just hanging out and crocheting with me. I P-shape, you guys. Okay. So we got some... We got our wings. We got a face. Other than the cheeks, which we'll get to in a little bit. And now... We can continue crocheting, and then we'll come back to the cheeks, to the new cheeks. At the end. Okay. All right, I believe I'm on round 12 if you're crocheting with me right now. Yeah, we only got one shot. Do not miss your chance to float. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You better not mess it up. Yellow yarn. Let's clean up our red yarn here. It's kind of gotten to be a bit of a a bit of a mess, isn't it? We're gonna throw it right over here. Whee! We'll deal with it later. Ooh, making a stego rock, and he's a chonky boy. What's a stego rock? Got to get that code copied. Okay. Yes, there's pressure. Pressure for the cheeks. All right, so we have just done... Okay, so now we're on round 13. I'm sure it'll go fine. If it doesn't, whatever. It ain't the end of the world. One, two...
Oh, ha Habiba, hello, welcome. New to crocheting, anything you suggest from your channel? Yes. Well, if you haven't done it yet, I definitely suggest you check out the Triceratops pattern. That's one of my favorites. Um, also, the there's a um, uh, there's a little piglet pattern that's really good. There's a brand new pattern that just came out for a um, a rhino by Sir Pearl Gray. That is really cool. Um, check that one out. That one's great for beginners. And let's see, what else? Anybody else have got any suggestions? What are your guys' favorites for uh, to suggest to Habib Habiba? Boom. And now we're on 14. Great suggestion there. Sorry, I'm counting. I just wanted to make sure that we were on count. Um, yes, what Alex said, Habiba, uh, the the bee, this little bumblebee that we just made is actually really great. Um, great for beginners, so check that one out too. All right, so round 15. Okay, but first I need to stuff it just a little bit. Um, let's start by stuffing it with all of our excess yarn. Our threads and stuff, so we don't have anything to left over at the end. Oh no, Sven, sit up, man. Gosh, he's tired, he hasn't had his coffee yet. And you know, you know how Sven is. Oh, these are going to be so cute, dudes. I don't know what we're going to do with the, them, but they're so cute. On to round 15. So we're almost done actually. Two. Three. This is our last round using yellow, which is nice. Cut a yarn color and get rid of it. Yeah. 
I think one of my first amigurumis was also a mouse. My first one was an octopus, but I think one of my early ones was a mouse. Uh oh my, it's gonna re-die, but it's charging. Oh well. Oh well. Okay, we got our bumblebees. Yellow yarn is done. A dumpling cat, I love that. An octopus, but it turned into a coaster. <laughs> cool. Okay. The plug isn't charging it anymore. I'll have to bring it up on my computer real quick. pattern I mean I already I killed it twice guys I killed it twice it's moited it's moited even okay so we do decrease down okay that's easy I moited it even one two decrease Decrease. Uno. Dos. Decreso. <laughs> How do you say decrease in Spanish? Anybody, anybody out there help out? How do you say decrease in Spanish? to change colors. A bumblebee is coming together just great. Last few rounds here, guys. Just gonna stuff it up a little bit. Mm. 
gotta go. Goodbye, Jane. Thank you so much for joining, and thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate it, Jane. There we go. stuffing menos means less menos uno dos menos that'll work almost out of almost out of stuffing guys I need to go to to the hobby store and get some stuffing Last round here, and then we can mess around on the face and see what's gonna see what we're gonna make. See how badly we can mess it up. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe. Addy asks, do I pack the kits myself? Sometimes I do, uh, sometimes I do, but other times my brother does. Um, so, yeah, mostly, it's mostly my brother now that packs the kits, um, but sometimes I go down and help out, pack up a bunch of them with them. I usually do like one of them and then I send it to him and I tell him like what goes in it and everything and then that way it's like make it look like this and then he does and then he sends me one to test it out and stuff like that so we got we got a little system in, in hand oh I will I will use an old pillow for stuffing if I need to if I don't get stuffing in time I will it's more important than sleeping is is crocheting If I haven't proven yet that that crochet is more important than sleep to me, then uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay. <laughs> so we got our bumblebee stinger. Bumblebee butt stinger. All done. Okay. So our queen bee is done technically, but we do want to add those cheeks. So first, before we do, before we try it on this one, Let's make a little tiny circle and test out some methods so we can make sure we get it right. Oh wow, we, we went way past three hours. Whoopsies. Oh well, we're almost done. Two.
Yeah, I actually did use a bunch of scraps for filling. Uh, th these are both filled with a, a lot of scrap yarn. But this is just the easiest and cheapest way. Um, we'll do one more round here for our test of our face stuff. I'm flying. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. Let's go ahead and slip stitch. Cut the yarn. Go through. Okay. Put that guy to the side. Let's get a paper towel. As Jules said, it could get messy. Place our paper towel down. All right, so here's our test run. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these. All right, so I think we're gonna start our test with this one because I think that pink is going to be the one we want to go with. Let's start by using a Q-tip and see how that goes first. I like how glittery it is. Get a little bit of it on there. little Q-tip there. Terrible. That could work. That could work pretty well. Let's see if I can get this Q-tip to be like a little bit like pointier. Get a little bit more like definition there. Because I think that pink is the one we want to use, right guys? Let's try it again. I think just dabbing is the best and then rubbing it off. Let's see how difficult it is to like get it off of it. It's pretty much impossible. Okay, so once it's on there, it is like on there. Okay, so we got pink. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we got the pink. Let's try the purple here. Purple's a little much. Purple's a little much. I think we should go with the pink. All right, we're gonna do it. Here we go. We'll get a new one here. All right, guys. Moment of truth, here we go. And we want it to go right we want the cheeks to go right there. Right there. Okay, here we go. push it out that's pretty cute I think I might want to go a little bit higher with it too though I don't want to overdo it though let's try the other one make it match that's what's most important here I almost slipped right there
How do we feel? I think I could. I think I could go a little heavier here. And then a little bit heavier up here too. Okay, so here's one side. Here's the other side. I think I'm gonna pull it in just a little bit. I love it. I love it. Just little dots of pink. I'm gonna close this so I don't add any more. I'm not, I'm not gonna grab it with this finger since I kept using that one. Let's put this stuff over to the side. What do you think? Adorable 10 out of 10, love it. I can't put purple above the eyes because I already did the eyeliner there, you know, the eyelashes. So I don't want to do any more extra. Jeez. All right, guys. Yeah, leave it as is. I agree. I agree. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining. Here we have our little... Uh, I think this guy helps to open the door. He holds the door open of the hive for fancy queen bees to come in. So we got our doorman, and then we've got our uh, queen, queen bee. I love her. I love those cheeks. Wow, that's, that's opened me up to a whole new way to add things, uh, and definitely going to have to do a little tutorial and mess around with that for sure. Um, we'll do, we'll do, uh, I'll mess around with it more in the future with other projects, uh, to add a little eyeliner and cheeks and stuff like that. Um, guys, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. I love these guys. Okay, so we're going to put them right down right there. And I will be back next week. Next week? Here's what I'm thinking we're doing next week, guys. I think we're going to be doing a live pattern. So I'm going to be crocheting. Now, I'm not positive if this is what it's going to be yet. So don't hold me to this. But I don't want to do it again next week. But what I'm thinking of doing is doing a live pattern for a seagull burb. Okay, so we'll do it live on live stream. Like how to, do, how to crochet a seagull burb. Because we're going to start doing ocean themed stuff. And I thought... Wow, let's do a let's do a burb. I owe you guys a burb anyhow, so I thought this would be perfect. Let me know what you think about in the chat or in the comments of this video. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been quite a long live stream, so I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss it when I come out with these live streams because that gives you a notification whenever I'm coming out with live streams. And uh, and if you uh, still, if you'd like to help support this channel, um, consider becoming a member on clubcrochet.com. It really, really helps support this channel. Uh, and you get a bunch of extra perks, like a bunch of patterns, uh, kits mailed to your door, you know, all that fun stuff, discounts in the shop, stuff like that. Um, okay, seagull or an out, yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll be back next Sunday, same time, same place, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here. So if you'd like to join, I'll see you then. Uh, we might do a little bit of Church of Perch. <laughs> That's for you, chirp a little. Chirp a little. Um, yeah, and guys, thanks so much for joining me on this Sunday in crocheting. And uh, yeah, all right. Pasta la pizza, happy hooking, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much again to, um, I can't, it started with an A. <clears throat> I don't want to say your name wrong, so let me scroll up real quick. Thank you to, hold on, hold on. There we go. Abfab, Abfab for the idea of doing the cheeks. Thank you, Abfab. Great suggestion. Thank you so much. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Stop it. No. Yes. 
I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Who said that? All right, guys. Uh, this one. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.